Good morning. Good morning. I'd asked the past few weeks, what are we zealous for? What are you zealous for? What am I zealous for? We saw there in John 2 that, that Jesus said, well, the disciples remembered after he has arisen. And they knew that Jesus was the one that said and spoken of that the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Has there been enough of distraction for you this week to get our mind on that zeal? There always is, isn't there? Yeah. But those things should drive us back to Christ. Even that one that we talked about there in Luke 7 last week, that Pharisee, that he, he desired Jesus to come in and eat with him, didn't he? Yeah. He, 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 he said, hey, you come and eat with him. But it always takes me back to what you've been bringing out, brother, as far as that. Is that grace in your heart or is that just opinion? Yeah. And that's what's been eating me up the wrong way, I guess. But, but it does take us to Christ because that, that Pharisee there, he... He said if this guy was a prophet, he'd, he'd know what kind of man or woman that was that was touching him because she was a sinner. Yeah. But even as the brother prayed, he, God teaches all of us because at that moment Jesus said, hey, these two people had this creditor. One owed, owed, 500, owed 500, one owed 50. He asked the Pharisee, well, who, who, would, who would probably love most if he knew that they had been completely forgiven? He said, well, the one that began forgiven most. And Jesus told him he was right. Yep. But he had desired for him to eat there with him. But the thing is, it said that he ate with sinners and publicans. Yeah. As far as really chewing on things that mattered. Because that woman that came in, yes, yeah, she knew she was a sinner. That Pharisee, he just had an opinion about who Jesus was and his desire to have Jesus to eat with him was nothing but that. Man, we have to be careful of that ourselves. But we'd be at his feet like this woman was, washing his feet with our tears over our sin because it is. How, how many times, even singing there, kneeling in deep contrition, Lord, help my unbelief because we are cold to it to see how much we've been forgiven of. Think from your birth till this moment right now, how much have you been forgiven? In the next few minutes, how much have you been forgiven? How much have I been forgiven? Because even I, I don't want to be the one that Jesus comes in and salutes, but then he goes off and knocks the dust off his feet because I wasn't at his feet. There's another example. If you will look over at Luke 10, if you don't mind, look over at Luke 10. There was another one that sat at Jesus' feet. And she wanted to hear what he had to say. So is it, is, it, is it the grace of God in our hearts or is it an opinion with us just sitting here? Are we progressing or are we regressing? As a challenge to myself, because it, it is to be more like Him. That's what your desire is, I pray. But the thing is, we need Him to get there. We need His blessed Spirit to teach us that. But if you will look over in verse 38, Luke 10, verse 38, and it says, Now it came to pass, as they went, they entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha did what? Received. She received Him into her house. She received Him and said, Hey, come here to my house. The Pharisee desired that He eat with Him, right? Come into the house. This woman desires for Him to come into her house. And verse 39 it says, And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet, but she did, and she did what? And she heard His word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to Him. Wait, what was Martha doing? She was serving, wasn't she? But it said she was cumbered with it. When I see that word, my mind always goes fearful when He saw that fig tree. Why does this cumber the ground? <laughs> I need to dig around it and dung it. If I come back, well, there should be some fruit there. But here, sitting there, she's coming, but she's serving. Is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing to serve others. But is it grace in her heart or is it an opinion? 
of who this one is. So he says, She's come about much servant and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. It's kind of like when Jesus told Peter to feed my sheep. And he eventually said, hey, follow me. And Peter goes, he looked over at John and said, well, what you have this man do? And Jesus thought, well, what if he tarries till I come back? What is that to you? You follow me. And that's, that's where we're at. We're like, what's so-and-so going to do? Where are they at? I'm like part of that song too as well. Hey, why, why these others you're calling, Lord, don't pass me by? Amen. That's where our thought needs to be. And it'll, it'll get you to him. Yeah. It'll get you to him and it'll warm you up too. To know that He is your only hope. That He is your only hope. But keep on going there. And then Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is what? Amen. How many things are needful? One. There's one thing that's needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So as Martha was receiving him into her house, but then she starts putting on the show for him, this one was at his feet and said, hey, that's the good thing. That's the one good thing. That, that's the, she's chosen the good part to sit at my feet and listen. So as we sit here this morning, that we won't be scornful, won't be mockers as we talked about in weeks before, but we'll sit here knowing that's the one good thing that's needful. That, it, that, is the, that is the good part. And look what he, he actually tells Mary. It's, he tells Martha, he said, this ain't going to be taken from her. He said, you're doing all those things, don't worry about it. He said, you're troubled with a lot of stuff. We troubled with a lot of stuff. These are the things that distract, him, distract us from him. Be still and know. Amen. Get there to those feet. Get there. Flip, flip over to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. Because everybody else needs to do something, not me. 1 Corinthians 3. First Corinthians 3. Of course, Paul's right here. Look over verse 9. It says, For we are laborers together. Uh-oh. With who? We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the what, though? Grace. Paul says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Why is he a wise master builder? Because at this point he said, I, I don't want to know nothing but what? Christ and him's crucified. He knew there was nothing else he could build upon. He said, that's all I need to know. That's that one good thing. That's the needful thing. And that's for all of us. That's that needful thing that we need. It says, I have, I have laid the foundation. He, he's sitting there and it sounds like, well, daggum, Paul sounds like he's bragging a little bit there. He says, I've laid the foundation and another built it thereon. But here's the warning to us. But let every man take heed how what? He built it thereupon. Is it that grace or is it an opinion that we had about this one that we said we'll receive or we'll invite into our home? We've got to take heed how he built home. Go on to 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? Jesus. Which is Jesus Christ. It ain't the fact that yet Jesus is the foundation. I can acknowledge that and say that. But the thing is, when it gets back down to it, that's the only thing is. That's the needful thing to get back to his feet. That is the foundation of everything. Be careful how we build upon that. It's Christ and Christ alone. Now, go on, go on down there. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, here it is. If any man, be careful how we build. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made what? Manifest, for the day shall declare it. it isn't that, well, there at the end of John, in John 3, he says, He that doeth truth cometh to the light to see if his deeds be wrought to God. And this right here, if we're, we're working, are we going to be like Martha, covered about with all our problems and issues, saying, why ain't somebody else doing something, Jesus? Or are we going to be taking that good part, sitting there at His feet and hearing? Said he, she heard His Word. And then, Lord willing, we do it. 
But keep on going there. It says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by what? Fire. And the, the brother prayed about the trials that we have. Guess what? The trial of your faith is, how's it going to be tried? It's by fire, isn't it? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, with, with which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. There it is. Hey, it says that we will receive a reward if it abides. But what is that abiding? Because it's built on the true foundation, knowing nothing but Christ and Him crucified. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be what? And how are we going to be saved, though? Yet so as by fire. And here's the question as far as in our heart. Where Martha, Martha was covered about in trouble, where that Pharisee was thinking he was going to do something by desiring Christ to be there. But if we'll be at his feet, and whether we're sitting there hearing his word or confessing our sin to him, like, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, right here. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And that's a lot of time. That's going to burn a lot of that, a lot of those old things off, that wood, hay, and stubble that we can build something there. As Paul said, he's a master builder. Yeah. But let's build on Christ, Christ alone. May the Lord bless your soul this morning.